Henrik Booger. Um, do you recall why you decided to collaborate with each other and what was your first performance? We had a common friend and uh, someday he came to me and said, man, you know what? I think you should meet Booger. Probably half a year later, uh, I think it was Booger's show in, in Berlin at uh, Babylon. In the afternoon, he arrived in, in Berlin and was at my house and, and, and he said, uh, yes, why, why don't you just join me on stage for the encore of the show? And I was like, oh man, that's frightening because I knew my electronic stuff, but, but like to really improvise on, on a stage with a seated audience was very frightening for me at on that point. But, but I said yes, so we ended up playing an encore, uh, which, which turned out to be 45 minutes long. And that was the start, in a way, yeah. And that was literally your show, Encore. So rather than it being something like, you know, a vocal, you know, a track that you prepared, it's actually completely improvised. Yeah. Um, no preparation at all. No. So there's a lot of trust in you then. I, I enjoyed it a lot. I mean, um, it ended up as the quite a huge part of our first album, the Duo, which is just made out of that first performance we ever did together, which uh, to me is, is amazing. I, but I'm, I come from jazz, I, I love improvised moments, that's, that's why I do music for, for these amazing moments, just to try to create them and, and uh, we were there. I mean, we did some really nice stuff then at the first time already. So what is it about Henrik's electronics that you find so compelling? Well, he's very, very good at it. Um, he has a great taste, coming also from graphic design. I think you have a very good aesthetics, very good vibe in sound, and you're very musical. And uh, seeing the development of the whole electronic music scene, I think definitely, maybe you, even you won't consider you so, but I would consider you a musician, and, and your instrument is the, the laptop. And what you do with it is just as skilled as what I have achieved on my side, you know, on the piano. So. Cool. Would you agree? Well, I, I didn't feel like that at all when, when we started this whole thing. And, uh, and maybe also for Boogie it was kind of easy because he's, he's used to doing that on stage. And even if everything I do crashes or is complete crap, he can still play blues in F or something, <laughs> yeah? It's, um, but still there's a lot of trust. In, in, uh, but for me, I was just frightened in a way, but also fascinated by by a seated audience and, and also what, um, like this special energy that you can create on stage when you do that, by throwing stuff back and forth and seeing what, ha what happens. Because you have that pressure uh, that something needs to come up somehow. So you, um, I, I always found that very fascinating. Yeah, and if you have someone like Boogie with you on stage, then nothing can really go wrong. Yeah? That, and that's, that feels very good too. So, um, do you remember your first setup, your very first setup when you started performing together? I think so. I had a grand piano, of course, and uh, normally when we play, we have a, also a um, mini Moog, which I would love to have because I love it. Uh, and now, for the last few years, we also have a wonderful bass player, Swedish Dan Berglund from the EST trio, uh, is joining us. So, yeah, but today we're, we're back to basics today, right? Yeah. And in terms of your, you know, um, I guess individual elements, I mean, do you, do you decide what the elements are in terms of, you know, melodic elements or bass elements or percussive elements? Do you have particular roles or is, is it purely what comes out, what comes out and you find space in what you're developing? Just basically no rules. Um, so we don't agree on, on anything and we agree on everything at the same time. So. Um, yeah, everybody can play everything and, and we try to find the balance while we do it. So when we play shows, then we have something what we rather call concepts. So um, how would you like start a track or what, what are we going to do? Where are we heading? Stuff like that. Um, but it doesn't really is about like I'm using this sound or that sound or, or I don't know what Boogie is going to do. And also I have changed my setup, I mean, not so much from the hardware, but, but uh, from the software side, I'm, I'm in a way playing with a new, with something new every time, um, because I'm trying to optimize, um, trying to get faster. 
or, or like uh, turn the computer in a more reactive instrument? Yeah, so what we'll do, I guess we'll just do a you know, sh short performance, sure. um, we'll review it, and then we'll open up for questions. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're going to do it like we did the first time. Um, I start something, and uh, he I sample him kind and of sample it, and I can use that as a layer of playing something else. He will play something else, and eventually, hopefully, we will make something. And it's, uh, that's the challenge. Maybe not. Maybe not, but that's the, that's, uh, the challenge, and that's why I love doing music.
Okay, you went in. <laughs> so, talk us through the experience. What went on, you know? So this, this is the way we, this is the essence of what we do, actually. I start out something, and you grab it, and you do what you want with it, and uh, we build from there, and uh, it's all the matter of how we manage to connect, and uh, if we manage to connect, then we can try to connect with the listener, and if we manage to connect with the listener, it will be a good experience. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, I think so. Can we look at your setup here? Yeah. Yeah, so. Mm. I mean, this is, I'm missing my mini mug, I have to say, but uh, anyway, it doesn't. It's, I'm missing your mini mug too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're missing your mini mug. <laughs> so this is uh, Rhodes going through my laptop and my sound card, going out to Henrik. And uh, it's, it's a, old-fashioned Rhodes, which I love very much. I love this instrument. That's my first thing I ever bought, actually. Before I even had a piano, I had a Fender Rhodes. Um, it's all these references to Fender Rhodes, you know, Herbie Hancock, yeah, Stevie sure. Wonder, and... Uh, it's a warm, really nice warm tone. You're just killing us. <laughs> yeah. I was watching some uh, performances around other studios. There's all this amazing stuff going on. And I find this equality between, like improvised music, like impro music with, with acoustic instrument, where you take the instrument as far as you can take it, which interests me very much. And the same as all these new type of instruments, virtual or whatever, that also brings the sound and the music to another level. But, so I like to take things to the extreme. So I love all these, these sounds that the roads can do. You know. Yeah, well that, I really... 
I think it's, uh, I always do that. I try with every synth, every instrument I have, I try to, to take it, to use something, use it out of the box, which I think is really cool. I think you do that as two probably. Yes. Yeah. I mean, what we both agree on is, um, I think this analog stuff and the beauty, beautiful sound, yeah. it gets even more beautiful if you combine it with what comes out from a digital instrument, mm -hmm. uh, because you, you get a very wide, uh, sound and, and um, like, like a huge landscape opens up if you combine them in the right way and I think we are both very fascinated by that um, especially like analog instruments as a sound source is something that I really like mm -hmm. uh, when you start treating them with plugins you, you can you can keep the richness of the original sound you have all those tiny little noises in there that, that uh, turn into something different when you, when you treat them, and, and that's something I, we both really enjoy. Well, we can definitely hear it when you're uh, performing. You, you know, you, it's almost like, in one respect, it's like call and response. It's almost like you're creating melody and percussive elements with the roads. You almost like capture elements and obviously process them yeah. within Ableton. So talk us through once you've captured Booger into Ableton. Um, I basically capture everything that's coming from Boogie all the time, in a way, and once I hear something, um, then I start capturing the next clip, mm -hmm. and I use the end of the recording, because that was what I was looking for, and then I drop that clip into my processing mm -hmm. um, area, which is here. There is a few things in there. I have an LFO which smoothly yeah. runs through the EQ just mm -hmm. to make things a bit more alive. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, yeah, and then I start tweaking inside the clip. I mean, I hear what the software is playing. Mm -hmm. It's coming out the speakers. And while I hear it, I, I try to turn it into something else. Sure. And, and uh, so I work a lot with transients and, and, how, uh, and the length of the transients because then you get really nice percussive sounds yep. or for example here that might be a Rhodes line yep. mm -hmm. and Boogie played it before we had uh, a tempo mm -hmm. but the sequence is running of course and, and I just record and then the software drops whatever he has played to a random position. So it's like a, just capturing sound really? It's just capturing yeah, yeah. yeah. and sure. it's dropping the music that he played um, to a random position yeah. mm -hmm. um, and this is something that I find very interesting to work with because once I drop it onto my grid and probably combine it with a rhythmic sound, then you get, you might get, if you are lucky, you, you might get a line that is really, really interesting because um, no human being would actually play it that way. Uh, but still, it's very, very musical because it comes from him. Yeah, of course. Um, but, but that is something that sounds very new to me. It's, it's, uh, and this is something I really like. When we find these kind of lines, melodies, chord progressions, this is what I'm looking for. And, and from there, this is, yeah, I play it then, and then he hears it and jumps into it and probably replays it like a second after he heard it. Or responds to it, yeah. Yeah, or responds yeah, yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, I find that very interesting. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, we do too. And I'm sure you have some questions. Do we have a microphone? The question I've got is very basic, is how do you deal with the BPM? So he, you, you're controlling the BPM, right? Yeah, but that's what I, what I mean. We, we actually don't care. And I think that makes it interesting. The BPM runs at a random speed in a way. Yeah, I might have said whatever, 120, and, and he's playing at 65. <laughs> and then you get this very interesting shift in sound. Uh, very often it's just noise, but, um, or it doesn't make sense. But there's always a point when, when you have a loop or a drum loop going over a solo there's always a moment when you think, ah, that was good. Because it, somehow the beats and the, the melody go, go together in a nice and new way. And that's what I'm trying to grab uh, very quick. And then um, I just, I use all the warp functions to, um, to put it where it should be. But I don't care where it was before. So, so the line might change quite drastically. I just use the notes or the chord progression, and, but I, I might shift this um, like back and forth a lot. So That only works if you program the beat live also, right? You never have any pre-programmed beats then, do you? No, no. Because then it would be total chaos. So you just have to, everything has to be live 
yeah. in order for that to work. Yeah, that's okay. awesome. yeah. And I think the idea is to just to, to get free of that preset stuff, you know, that you can build everything from scratch, actually. I think that's the fascinating, uh, it's the challenging thing. And then me coming from, from improvised music and jazz, that's, that's what I love about jazz. It's, it's, to me, it's a unique art form because it's, it's made in front of the, the listener, actually, the music, and you will, it's never been done, it will never be done again. Um, even, I mean, it's, of course, we, it's a, we do this, but there's, there's uh, formats, but within those frames, there's a lot of freedom, and I think that's the, that's the beauty of what we do, I think, really. Thank you. Next question. I'm curious, kind of, the thought process when it comes to, like, this composition on the fly, in terms of transitioning, transitioning layering, and just building off each other. So if you guys could maybe talk through kind of what thoughts are going in your head, this would be really cool. <laughs> or if there's no thoughts, that's also <laughs> maybe cooler. <laughs> yeah, it's really happening in real time. So um, I might hear something and, and then you have a response in your head or, and then you're trying to, and that's what I find the difficult part when you work with a computer, to, to be as fast as possible to do that. Uh, because you have to find a sound really quick, you have to, uh, because there's all these options and how can you access them really, really quick. So I spend a lot of time in uh, writing small max patches that help me speed up. It might, it might be tiny little things, for example, I have the selector for the inputs here. I just press these knobs and then um, the input channels switch um, on the keyboard so I can play different synths, and so I, it takes me half a second to switch from one synth to the next one. And uh, access to sounds, I find very important that that goes very, very quick. So I have a bank of sounds here that I know, and I just click here, open, select the sound, and then it's there. And also the control for all those sounds um, gets mapped to those few knobs here, so I'm... I'm I'm somehow m trying to make it as responsive as possible. So, very few knobs, but they can do many things uh, depending on what's happening at the moment. So, um, yeah, and that takes a lot of time for preparation, uh, but as a result, I can be, yeah, quick, but still far away from how quick he is. Um, but, but I think that the, I mean, the, the development of, of this gear and software is just uh, it's still at the beginning and it will be faster and faster. And I think now we can really do real-time hardcore processing. I mean, much more hardcore than we did. I mean, I think what you're talking about also is the key elements in what you do. Key elements in music, for example. Uh, and to me, it's dynamics. It has to have, music has to have some kind of dynamics. It has to have a should go up and should go down, you know? Yeah, yeah but that's, isn't that the key element? And I think I, because I love jazz, I come from jazz, but then at some time, jazz got so technical, you know, it was just like kind of boring to listen to and very formatted also, actually. So I started to go to clubs and uh, first time I saw, I think it, I noticed, first time I saw Stacey Pollen, I think, he played in Oslo at a wonderful place called Jazzid. Uh, and the way he worked with his music and the vinyls and the audience brought things up and down, made people into a kind of a higher dimension. It was just fantastic. And after that, I just wanted to, I thought, that, okay, this is what I want to do too. <laughs> Fortunately, I just play piano, but I still am going to try. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Great question. Cool. Any more questions from you guys for the time being? Um, so I really enjoyed your improvisation on the roads, and I was just wondering if you had any advice for people trying to get more into improvisation who maybe are used to clicking in notes and kind of find it daunting when you like turn on a track and are trying to play along with it when you really have like very little musical experience, I guess. Um, it it takes time, it's just like, the, but with anything, if you, I'm, I'm sure you're very good at just typing in these things too, and you spent, uh, you have spent a lot of time, and you do spend a lot of time developing it, so it's the same with the piano, of course, to be a skilled jazz piano player, it takes a lot of time, there's many people who's way better than me, so, but it takes, I've been playing piano since I was two years old, so, on well, the other hand, I'm on the side, same side on the laptop stuff, I'm just, uh, I love it, and I'm listening and getting inspired by all, all you guys doing it, so that takes time. But I saw some, also some fascinating stuff with kind of 
real-time improve with different elements now. There's, there's this, this software stuff that can allow you to actually do very fascinating playing without having to play an instrument. And that, that I think, is something that's, uh, that's really cool. But then you can avoid all that. Kind of, you don't have to learn all those scales or all those chords. And you can just kind of play. I mean, you even made a Schwarzenegger who does a little bit of that, right? You can that's a patch you made, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's a max patch that, that, yeah, it corrects your playing. I mean, if, it, <laughs> if that's what you are after. But uh, I think it's, for me, the improvisation part is, is about reacting like reacting as a human being and uh, you could you can play with uh, another human being or you can play uh, with your computer and um, and so you can put something in that has dynamics like you said um, and then you hear hear it and then you're trying to react what the computer is giving you and then you improvise so it doesn't really matter if you if you play notes or uh, and, and then you will get better on it, like you said. It's, uh, uh, you get faster. Uh, yeah, this, I think this is, for me, is, is the very important thing. How can I react really fast uh, to, what is, to what I'm hearing? And, and that can be anything. You can also like, drop stuff with a mouse uh, really quick. Um, you just have to make an, uh, a very quick decision, like, or intuitive decision. I think that's what is very important. Mm. And it's just to, to be tasteful. I mean, that's, that's a very good word, I think. Because today, of course, it's, you, can, you can do everything. It's so easy, but to, to, to make that, to have that special taste that makes your stuff sounding different than others, that's the key. And that, that you just have to spend time with, regardless of learning to play the piano or, or learning to do. It's, it's aesthetics and, and your personal taste matters really a lot, I think. Even more than before, because there's just so much music out there. Last nice one, thank you. There's a question at the back there, please. Um, I just wanted to understand if you feel the urge to record everything you do and crystallize the moment, or you just don't care and uh, like what you did is gone. I basically record everything if possible, because sometimes you create something new, and, and that's what we are after. Hmm. It's, most of our music for the albums that we made are are, are kind of re remakes of good moments when we did yeah. live, you know. But there's another question. This is, of course, that what we do in this world when everything is so accessible, everything is everywhere. Maybe there should be the unique thing about us that we should only be played. You can only listen to us here. You know, that, that you're never to be released somehow. That's kind of another idea. But uh, then again, probably if we got very famous, someone would record it anyway and just <laughs> put it out there, you know, so I don't know. Nice one. Thank you. Um, I've got a question for you. So, with your setups now, they're obviously growing and evolving. Um, apart from the real time being able to access sounds quickly, what other challenges do you both have when it comes to performing in the, and collaborating in this way? From my experience, you, you spend all this time uh, like thinking about music and you're trying to create something and it might be difficult and then you're trying to work with people and it's still difficult and you're not getting where you want. But, but then there's a you probably have two, three lucky moments in your life when you meet someone uh, you can play with. Yeah, and, and I think that is, uh, and once you have someone, then that's worth so much. So it's, it's um, um, when you don't have to think anymore, it just works. And so that's, um, I, th I think we're not, we don't do many discussions about how to improve things. We, we don't, we just keep on, throwing stuff at each other and, and see what happening happens, yeah. So would you say you've got like a, na a, a kind of a language? Is there a kind of Henrik Burger language, silent language that you've developed? There's a mutual understanding. And again, as you said, it's based on trust. Okay. You, I'm trusting that, that um, when I play something, like in the beginning, he's going to do something with it. And if nothing comes, it's just that I didn't play good enough, so I have to <laughs> keep playing oh, until it's so slow. good that he will... I was too slow. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's based on trust, and, and, uh, and the f I think every time we meet, we both of us, we have something new, a, a new element to what we do, and which is also really cool, so that we are kind of eager and uh, out there moving on. Hmm. Yeah. So I guess technology allows the capturing and recalling and just deconstruction of trust, I guess, in your case, right? 
Yeah, I can also, I, uh, for me it's the same, if, uh, especially since we do that since quite a while now, it's like, it really feels like you can put us anywhere you want okay. and it's, yeah, sure. it doesn't matter. We give us something and, and we're going to make something. It's, mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So I think we want to hear some more, don't you? Thank you. 
Yes. So, you had a tablet over there, iPad. What are you doing with that? Uh, it's basically just I'm controlling my stuff. Uh, probably we've been discussing forth and back. You have all these controllers, but I figure I'm using Lemur, so I'm just controlling Ableton. That's basically what I do in, in essence. Just to avoid standing, look at into this uh, laptop. I just, uh, just, yeah, <laughs> get rid of that yeah. laptop. And is it, a, is it a patch? Is it a series of effects? And what is the setup? No, there's no patch. I mean, this is just eight pages or ten pages where I can control all kinds of elements within Ableton, effect sense. Uh, keyboard sounds, filters, uh, yeah, a lot of kind of randomizing stuff and yeah, different stuff. For people who want to enter this world beyond, you know, once you find someone with trust, what advice would you give to artists and producers who want to pursue uh, this style of performing and expressing? Uh, for me, it's just it's the understanding of communication. I think that's the key key thing. One thing is your skills and your techniques and whatever you... I mean, to, to do what he does and to do what I do and to do what clever, clever people do, they, they are really... They work a lot before, you know? They prepare, they are rehearsed. But when you actually play, it's all about the communication and that we communicate and our music communicates to someone and, and those who listen will communicate their expressions back, and this is, yeah, that's maybe the key. But I was missing, if, uh, we should, <laughs> talking about all the things I'm missing, but of course, the, really, the acoustic piano also would be the ultimate for us. We're missing that, and it gets very electronic now, but that it's yeah. um, normally with the acoustic bass and the piano, uh, there's, there's something about this all following me, is if, with my music, is that mixture of the wonderful acoustic sounds and the, amazing possibilities with the uh, technology and stuff. That, that, that combination is ultimate to me. Yeah, I would say it is worth it to really spend some time um, because the impression I have at the moment is that there's a huge audience for, for this kind of stuff. And, um, and the audience is also very, very open. I mean, this is something that I've, I've learned from Boogie, from these concerts that I was surprised what we can do and because I thought yeah somehow this needs to be entertaining for everyone and and uh, but it can be on a really crazy level and and um, the audience follows I think it's important that you that you really dive deep and find your own way of working with uh, the machine because of you have to liberate yourself from from what the software does in a way because if you just follow what it gives you, then you might be on the same level like everyone else, but, but if you try to, to break it up, uh, it can be anything, um, then it's going to be interesting. The feedback we're getting is just that it's, it's the, as the listeners, they, they like to see us develop this thing. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, the, that's an interesting thing to follow, and you get kind of, wow. And then, even if it's not very good, as the last thing we did wasn't that good, but still it's kind of still interesting just to follow it. And, and just this um, thing that, will they make it, kind of, I think that's yeah. a fun thing. Yeah. <laughs> will they make it? So in a sense, the audience are also collaborators, right? Absolutely. Because, yeah, 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 yeah. sure. Um, obviously, it's not a simple question, but confidence is obviously plays a big part in performing in this way. Would you say, Looking at the years that you've been working together in this way, would you say your confidence level has scaled, or was it has it been consistent, um, or <laughs> obviously it's not depleting? I think yes, confident, but we're confident on each other, but never on the music. I think you never know. We just can't. We can only do the best we can, okay. and I think the our insecurity is also our strength somehow that we dare to to. Sh show our insecurity to that it, I think that's the thing in itself actually that we go out here and just do something yeah yeah I would absolutely agree on that yeah it's it's not about that we are sitting here like yeah we can do it uh, it's super fragile and uh, it goes wrong sometimes and but it's more about yeah you sit down and still do it uh, because I think that's important yeah thank you all right cool we've got a couple of minutes for some final questions before we wrap it up um, I'm just wondering if you ever allow melody or something more um, <laughs> traditional 
in terms of songwriting to come through. I mean, I love, I love it. Really, 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 really love it. I'm just wondering whether you ever feel restricted by the fact never, that... Never, never. Right. <laughs> yes, we do. I mean, we are very romantic people, you know? We, yes. We, <laughs> have, have, should, should we just, instead of talking, have the time just to play the, the themes, the uh, chamber music or one of the, uh, yeah, yeah. the stuff we did yeah, in go Luxembourg? Go I mean, that's what we actually... Um, we, we love melodies yeah. and chords. We are and stuff, melodic. So, and <laughs> if you listen to our records, there's a lot They're of melodies melodic. and chords there. So, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they come, sometimes they don't. <laughs> no, but it's, it has to do, this is the acoustic side again. I, th I love playing a melody on a piano. And the roads also works, of course, but, but playing it like a melody on a synth, uh, electronic stuff is kind of more for, for sounds and, and stuff. Maybe even on the Minimoog I can play a melody because it's such a beautiful sound. But, but this, this, this is, we're showing now the electronic side. But I will try a melody on the, on the roads. Thank you. 